You've probably heard of Markdown and Markdown is used everywhere. GitHub issues, GitHub pull requests, GitHub readmes. Every project has a readme, but not every project stands out. Not every project has a readme that's really good and people want to read. Not every issue and pull request gets comments, gets engagement, and not every pull request gets merged. You can help yours do so much better by adding Markdown and making it really like really nice for the consumer, the other person who's reviewing it, reading it, to understand what is going on. Code blocks, the right headings, the right lists, even task lists. Like look behind me now, we've got check items. So it can show on a pull request or on an issue how many tasks you've done so people can see the progress of that item. And that's super important. So you need to learn Markdown. And there isn't loads to learn, probably like 10 or 12 different things. I'm gonna show you in this video what we're gonna do. But before we get started, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below if you haven't already. So what is Markdown? Well, Markdown is a lightweight markup language used for styling text, like documentation, on the web, also for creating websites. It has the typical styling, for example, italic, bold, list, and so on. Markdown is found everywhere on the web and also on GitHub issues, GitHub pull requests, comments, just so many different places. And there are also tools like ASCII Doctor or Jekyll that will take your Markdown files and create it into static website so you can host on GitHub pages for free and you can even add your own custom domain to that as well. So today we're going to cover all the items in Markdown that you need to stand out. And you may think it's not important, but you know when I'm uh, hiring for my clients, I actually review people's GitHubs. Okay, no surprise there, but I'm not looking for what you think I'm looking at. I look on how they communicate, have they learned stuff in the last three months and so forth. Yes, but how they communicate, not only are they friendly and empathetic and able to give constructive feedback really well, but how do they set out their issue? Is it really nice for me to read it? Have they used bold where they want to emphasize something? Have they used the right headings? Have they used lists? I don't want everything in bold. I don't want everything in a list, but have you used the right items? Do you know how to use it? Are your code blocks in code blocks and have they got syntax highlighting on them? These things, mean you think about me reading yours and you're, you're taking that in consideration. I think that's really important. So the first thing we're going to do is headings. And well, you probably know this already, but I'm going to show you for those of you who don't, there are chapters below that you can skip to if you want, but I recommend you watch all of it because I'm sure you'll learn something. And if I've missed anything or any ideas that you have, also leave a comment below. So heading one, it's gonna be a hash or H1 in HTML will be a hash. So we'll call this heading one. And you only want one of those on your markdown file, comment, pull request. These aren't used that much to be honest. And then, you know, you guessed it. We're gonna have a heading two and it's two hashes. And you can go all the way down to six because we've got H6 in HTML. So we can say, Heading six, I think that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can always preview and see what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Make sure you're using this correctly because on the markdown files for the README, GitHub actually does chapters. Let me show you. So this is one of my repos and you can see here in the README, I've got latest YouTube video and I've got testimonials as headings. And if you notice, as we scroll past the README.md section, that stays at the top static. And then you get this menu icon here and actually this is the contents. So you can skip to different sections that you want using that, which is awesome. Okay, it's a pretty short file, so the skip is not working very well. But if you get a bigger readme, it works really well. You don't even need a table of contents at the top of your file anymore, which saves you space as well. Right, back to this. So make sure you're using the right heading and think of H1 to H6. Next, I want to show you styling. This is really, really important. So if you want to say this is really, and we put really in bold, this double asterisk on both sides, uh, and we can say really important. And then when you preview it, we make this a bit bigger for you, you can see that really is in bold. You don't want everything in bold, but you do want some things in bold. And you might also say, and I want this to stand out too. And then you could put the standout in italics, which is single asterisks on both sides. Make sure there's no spaces because you can see now standout is in italic. But if you put a space, it doesn't work. So make sure you've got your spaces correct. So in bold and italic and strike through, you don't want spaces. However, with your H1 to H6, you can't put heading one like that. That's not going to work. You do need to have a space for the headings. So just remember those little tips there. 
Okay, next up, what should we do next? Lists, I find lists are really good. So you can do a list with a hyphen and you can say this is item one. And you can see I just hit enter. I didn't write like the hyphen, the dash. It automated it for me. If you enter again, it disappears for you, which is great. And you can say this is item two. And it looks like a nice list. It's an unordered list, so a UL in HTML. But we can do them ordered. We'll get to that in a moment. But other things we can do at the beginning of this list, we can put checkboxes. And we do that with uh, the square brackets with a space in the middle and after. Um, and so you can see now they are now checkboxes. And then other thing we can do is if we put an X instead of a space, it marks it as checks. So you can uh, show which items have been done and items which aren't done. And if you're not doing an item because it's it's not part of your work or it's not relevant, you can always delete it. But what I think is really good is to do a strike through and that's double tilders on both sides, just like with the bold metallic, no spaces. And you can say, I'm not doing this one. Like it's really crystal clear. You don't want to have loads of conversation back and forward about the silly little things. You want to collaborate on the amazing things. So next thing on the list, let's do an ordered list. So we could do one item one, and then we could do two. You can see it's automatically put in two for me, item two, and then we'll do item three. I wanna show you a, an awesome hack in a moment. And if we do preview, you can see now it's item one, two, and three. But the hack I wanna show you is that say if we reorder this, say we put the three down here in between the two, then it's gonna be in the wrong order. I need to re renumber this. Okay, it's not too bad if you've got a short list, but if you have a long list, it kind of is not very good. So what you should do is use one for each of those. And yes, this looks silly, but you'll see GitHub automatically puts them in the right order, which is perfect. So you can reorder things without having to renumber them, which is great. Another thing that's used a lot is links and images. So let's you do some links. So this is a link. And for a link, you wrap the text the, that you want displayed in square brackets. So you actually put the URL in normal brackets so we can say um, go to edihub.org and if I preview that you can see now that's a link and that actually goes to edihub.org perfect and if you want to do an image then all you need to do is actually put an exclamation mark at the beginning so it's very similar to a link and then this becomes the alt text for the image so this is a photo of Eddie and then here would be the URL or the path to uh, the image. Should I try and find one? You can find one and you can show me. But that's how it works with an image. And you can see we've got these up here. And you're like, Eddie, why are you showing us link? Link is right here. Why are you showing us image? Image is somewhere here. This one maybe. No, that's code, but it's somewhere there. My point is when you're editing a file, it doesn't have these. So you need to learn them and you might use them in another editor or somewhere else that doesn't have these. So it's really important uh, to, to learn them. It might be one of the interview questions that you get, right? Documentation is becoming super, super important. More than code. Yep, you can quote me on that. More than code. Let's do code next. I know you're really, really excited. So we can say this is how you use a console.log. So that's a bit of code. You open and close it with back ticks, no spaces. Um, and we can just say here, it doesn't make any sense, but I just want to show you that it's in line, that's in line. But if you really want to be cool and you're doing a code block, which I, which I highly recommend, you can actually do syntax highlighting. So you can say, I don't know, here is some code. And then underneath, we can say console, actually, you know what? Let's do something a bit interesting. Do const a equals, I don't know, a, 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 very, very uh, useful. And then we can say console log a. And this will show as a code block, so it will take up the whole screen. It's not in line, it's the full width, but it still doesn't look very good. You've got to be thoughtful for the other people reading your comments, issues, progress, read me, etc. And you can actually put the type of language you're using. Markdown, Bash, uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, Perl, PHP, loads of stuff. And when you preview it, you can see it's syntax highlighted, which is really, really important and really, really nice to have. And also what you do as a code block, now on GitHub you get this copy, so you can literally copy the entire code block, which is super useful. You don't have to try and, you know, kind of do this and you miss a bit, or it's got numbers down the side and it's a real mess. Another thing you can do with code blocks is a diff. So say you're adding a line, trying to say to someone, hey, I want to add and remove a line. Usually you do this before we can remove this. And then you might say, and we'll just copy this. And you might say after. And then we'll say, we'll change it const to a B. We'll change them to Bs and we'll change it to B, right? So you might see something like this, before and after. 
But did you know you can do that all in one code block? Eddie, what are you talking about? Well, you can. So if I ditch one of them to show you, and if I just say changes, because it's, you know, changes. Actually, what we can do is we can say we're going to remove this line and we're actually going to remove this line and we're going to add the other line. So, oops, we're going to say plus, plus. And if there was an extra line, like a return A or something, you could have that with no plus or minus. That's staying the same, for example, no changes there. And then we will change this to B and we'll change this to B and that to B. And if we change the type, not from a language to a diff, when we preview it, you can see it's now showing, we're changing from this to this and this line remains unchanged. Like it's super clear. Like you wanna be clear, you wanna be concise. You don't wanna to be too short, but you don't wanna to be too long either. So this is like really, really good. Great way to stand out, great way to look professional as well. If you're leaving a comment and you're referring to say something that was happened in Discord or a conversation somewhere else, you probably want to include that message. So you might say following, our discussion on Discord, I recommend we use option A. But option A doesn't mean anything to anyone who wasn't here. That's the important part, right? You need to have it make sense to people who weren't involved in, in that discussion. So what I recommend you doing is quoting, and you can do that with the greater than symbol. This is if you're copying and pasting it from Discord or from email or somewhere else. So you can say option A is dot, 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 dot. And then we could do another one and we could say option B is dot, 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 dot. And then when you preview it, it shows that this was a conversation or a quote that happened somewhere else. And then you can give your feedback on that conversation. Like you're giving it context. Or if someone's written a really long comment and you want to address the different sections, you know, you could literally copy and paste their sections and write underneath it each one. So you could say hey, that was section one, for example. I'm not saying these are subtitles or anything like that, but let's call it comment part one. And then you could have your, your discussion underneath about it or your response. And then you could copy the next part and that was their comment from part two. Um, and then, I don't know, option B. But my point is your replies to each section are super clear, which is what you want. You always want to be super clear. The next thing I want to show you is tables in Markdown. And I think this is really, really useful. So you can have column one and then we'll have, we'll have three columns. So we'll just say column two and we'll say column three. And the way you do the heading, these are the titles, is you do a pipe and the space, you make sure you have the space. Uh, and then you can call the, the the heading, whatever you want, the column, whatever you want. Same with the second, third, fourth, as many as you want. And underneath is the alignment. So remember the space after the first pipe. And to do left align it, you can do colon three dashes. So the colon on the left of the three dashes means left aligned. And if we want column two to be center aligned, then we actually need a colon on both sides of the dashes. So now that's centered aligned. And you guessed it, if we want column three right aligned, it's going to be three dashes colon. And that's it. And it's still got the pipes to separate the columns. And then we could have item one, A, let's say, for example, uh, item uh, one B and item 1c. There you go. And then you'll see that this is left aligned. You can see it's uh, the eyes in line with the C and you can see item 1b is aligned in the middle and uh, item 1c is aligned to the right. So that's pretty cool. And then you can have as many rows as you want as well. Okay, those numbers should be changed, but but you get the idea. So it looks pretty good, really neat and tidy, great for glossaries and those sorts of things. If you wanted to center align something, you'd have to use HTML. So you can actually use HTML in your markdown files. Not all HTML items, but you can use some. Um, so if we wanted to center something, we could create a P tag, for example, and we could say align and we could say center and then we'll put our text here and then close the P tag and now it's centered. The one thing I want you to note is, yes, you can mix in the same file. So we could have a H1, so we could say heading one, and it still works, heading one and text is aligned, but you couldn't put a hash within the HTML. You can't put markdown within the HTML. It won't be treated like markdown. You need to keep each line. If it has markdown, you got to keep it as markdown. And if you have it as HTML to keep it as HTML. What I mean by that is say we split this over multiple lines, it's still going to be centered, but I suddenly couldn't put a list in here like this, item one, item two, it's going to be ignored by the Markdown uh, renderer. So I would say you need to do that in HTML with ULs or LIs and so forth. So each section 
that's going to be rendered needs to be treated in the right way. So if it's markdown, it's markdown, it's HTML, it's HTML, but you can mix it within the same file. And if you want to show and hide content because it's taking up too much space, but you might want it there for maybe advanced features or more information, you could actually put a details section in HTML. And if we close that details and then inside details, you actually put summary or we could say show more info. Let's make it more like exactly what we're talking about. So show more info. And then if we close summary and then under that, we actually put the content that we want. So we could say more info on this great stuff, on this great stuff. And if we hit preview, you can see it's actually hidden. So show more info is what we have in the summary tags. So let me put some more content above it. So we can just say heading to great stuff. And then here we go. You can see so it says show more info, but there's no uh, more info on this great stuff. But you can click it and then you can see it hide and appear and so forth. And you could put kind of as much as you want in there as well. You could even put a list if you wanted to. But that everything within details, apart from the summary title, will be hidden until someone clicks it. And you get that toggle for free, which is which is great. So we can say item one. And if I copy and paste that item two, hit preview. We can see you've got item one, item two, show and hide as, as I click on this. And you might want to um, put an icon in front of it. You know, you can style it out to make it look a lot nicer. So yeah, that's a great way to hide bigger sections. And the other sections will just move down. So we could say even more great stuff. Hit preview. You can see it's underneath. If you click on this, you can see it just moves up and down. It doesn't overlap anything. It's great that HTML takes care of this for us. I think that's all for this video. I hope you really enjoyed Markdown. I hope you understand all of it. Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments below. I really look forward to seeing your amazing issues, pull requests and readmes that you're going to do after now you're an expert in Markdown. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And I'll chat to you in Discord between videos and live streams. Link in the description below.